1,461 days later. Today is the four year anniversary of my reef. That means four years ago today, all the livestock went into this aquarium. The tank actually was the second version of this tank. The first one I set up in 2011 and uh, things went wrong, had to restart. So I wanted to share with, I actually had this really cool idea because the tank looks so different from where it looked six weeks ago. You guys saw the video where I showed uh, all the corals being pulled. And uh, so now there's like all this empty space where there was this giant colony before. Oh, well, it's gone. I am going to do an updated video in the near future. Uh, I just didn't have time this week. Too much going on. The new app is out. Uh, in case you haven't gotten Reef Trace yet for your iPhone, you can download that now. Uh, but the website's still a work in progress. And we're still adding blogs. Um, basically, I want every blog that was ever blogged on the new site. So when we unplug the old site, all the data still exists. Uh, so anyway, my plan for an updated video will be where you can see the tank morph over time, month after month after month, and just kind of show you how the tank got to where it is today. And I think that'll be really cool, but I gotta dig through so many archives of pictures. Uh, I'm not gonna have video going that far back, so it's gonna be more like a slideshow video, but I think it'll be neat. I think it'll be something to show growth pattern and uh, change over time. It'll probably take me a huge amount of time for something that'll be really quick. <laughs> That's usually how these videos work on YouTube. And uh, you know, you'll spend hours making a video and you end up with like two minutes of uh, footage to share, but that's okay. Uh, tomorrow is the live stream and that's gonna be at two o'clock and I'm talking about top off kits and uh, the importance of topping off your tank. So that'll be something to look forward to. Two o'clock central time in the United States because I'm in Texas. And uh, so let's just get into this. I wanna show you what the tank looks like right now today. Here are some current parameters that I've been logging into Reef Trace. And you can see my magnesium is a little low. pH is quote unquote fine. Uh, alkalinity, I like it. And uh, there's other tests, they're just not included. And here is a view of the tank as of this evening. Uh, the bulb on the right is in 20K mode. The bulb on the left is in 10K mode. The XHOs are on, throwing all their blue into the tank. Overall, this actually is a pretty decent video representation of what my tank looked like before 7 p.m. At 7 p.m., the light on the right turns off. SPS-wise, corals are doing great. Uh, since changing out everything, there really hasn't been anything dramatic my calcium reactor desperately needs me to add more media, and my biopelt reactor is low. I found out today that my shipment of the uh, marine pure bricks that you put in the sump that are supposed to help to remove nitrate, those have shipped out today. So I'll be trying that out. My current nitrate level as of the last test, if I use ELOS, it's over 25, which I already knew. When I used API, it was measuring at 40. So I'm trying to bring them down from 40, but you know what? I find it very interesting that numbers that are high like that are not hurting the reef because I know people are so concerned and they want that ultra low nutrient system type parameters. They want the super low nitrates below five. And my tank has been above <laughs> for some time actually. I didn't even know. I mentioned in a previous video how my uh, test kit was wrong and it was replaced by ELOS. They apologized, sent me new kits. And they said, you know, whatever happened, it doesn't matter, here's your new kit. And now my measurement is higher than what the card shows. So be it. You can see the fish are eating, and I wanted to mention that because in the rest of the videos that I filmed, there's a lot of stuff blowing around in the tank. And it's blowing around because the fish are eating and pooping, and air bubbles are hitting the water because of the change of surface tension. So if you see a lot of stuff blowing around, think of it as flow. One of the things that's very important to me as a hobbyist is to set up a living ecosystem with growing corals, healthy fish. Uh, you know, of course I want it to be beautiful. But there's so many people out there that seem to have this passion for a museum-like tank, and that's not what I want at all. Here is the Shadowcaster, and it is bursting with new tips all over it. There must be 50 new tips. The Sea Bay Anemone, full of skunk clowns is still my showpiece. Ideally, this would have been an empty valley in my rock work, but she took it over. 
Uh, you can see the Sunset Monopore has completely colored up. That was bone white a month, uh, about 50 days ago. And here are some of the SPS corals that are turning into tiny little colonies. From the back, you can see the limer or lime in the sky, and it is growing out nicely. It is colored up. The tips are blue. Uh, more of the shadow caster and some of the other SPS on the rock work. And then in the very back of my tank, I also have some leathers. Uh, these are devil's hand corals. Very easy for the new hobbyist. Just a couple of acros and my huge cowrie that I've had for a couple of years now in the reef tank. I thought I'd show you this. So that's a Montipora sitting there kind of balanced and it got out of position. So I corrected it in this video and I thought I'd show you how I do that. Basically, I reached in, grabbed the coral, and leveled it. <laughs> Done. That was pretty easy, right? Uh, you can move corals around without too much concern. Obviously, if you glue it down or putty it, that would be best because you want your coral to stay in position and not move. These are some uh, sponges that are growing out on my live rock, and I thought they were really pretty. Um, the video is not as nice. And look at all the stuff blowing around in the water. Good lord, you can tell I just fed the tank. This is an Elkhorn Montipora that I got from Duane. And there's some kind of a reddish acro that also came from him. And this little tiny clam has been living in my reef for years. It is a tiny guy. And if you look really closely, you'll see that he shuts rather quickly. But I unfortunately, I changed the perspective of the camera right as it was happening. So look really close. You might even want to rewind. But it's a little hitchhiker. Ah, see, I missed it. I wish I hadn't have moved the camera right then when it happened. But it's been alive and well. The copper band hasn't shown any interest in it, which is fortunate because I figured it might try to devour my little clam. I've... I found it in my rock work about four years ago. This thing is tiny. It is smaller than an Astria snail. Uh, for you metric people, one centimeter. For you inch people, less than an inch. <laughs> Half an inch? I don't know. A tiny little guy. Super adorable. To the left there is a devil's hand uh, leather to give you a slight sense of perspective. And the rest of this video, I want to kind of dedicate it to the subject of flow. Because if you look really closely, you'll see the polyps are really moving in these corals. This is a bird's nest coral you're looking at right now. It's got green hues. This right here is a green polyped uh, toadstool leather, which each one of these little things wants to eat. Those are all individual mouths you're looking at. There went Spock. Sorry about that. Uh, I've had this toadstool leather in my tank for about two years. It's been a very slow grower. Usually they grow quicker. But it is what it is. My little mandarin from 2011 is still with me. That's six years. Came from ORA. And the Melanur's Rass decided to swim into the frame. Here's a Blasto that I got a couple of years ago from a fellow hobbyist as he was breaking down his tank. As well as the Milka Coral and that Pajama Cardinal Fish and some green uh, cat's paw. Now this right here is an LPS coral called a lobophilia. And it looks very boring, but when you look closely, you'll actually see some movement. And there is some color to it. It's not the most vivid coral in my tank, but it's still appealing to me. This next coral is an Acanth echinata, Acanthostrea echinata, and look at the movement of these polyps. It's actually pretty amazing. It's almost like a heartbeat. And this is all happening because of the flow in the tank. The water movement is what's causing this coral to respond this way. And this is totally normal time. I'm not time lapsing. I'm not doing anything to speed this up or slow it down. This is how it's moving in my tank. But when you look at it from a distance, you don't really see the movement nearly as much. So here's the regular perspective. And you know, there's a hint of movement, but not much. This one is very voracious, by the way. It will eat its neighbor. And this is a pagoda cup, and it's the green polyp variety. These corals, each of those is again a mouth. You know, it wants to capture food. I never feed it specifically. I feed the tank, and it captures what it can in the flow at night, each night. And that's the lime in the sky from the front of the tank. And boy, does it look like the anemone could touch it and kill those beautiful blue tips. 
I wash it every single day thinking I really need to move that coral. But look how pretty it is. It's doing so well. And hopefully the anemone won't touch it. Or I will just move that darn rock to save it. Here's another Lobophilia. And again, you can see the large, and this is in the LPS family, and you can see the large polyps moving in the flow. And then here is finally the last demonstration of flow in your tank. This is that huge Gorgonian on the right side of my tank. And I just want you to kind of realize how is it's moving. So I filmed this part for about 60 seconds. There'll be a part where you don't see anything, and then it sways back in. It seems like the flow is coming from every different direction, which is pretty impressive considering I'm using the Abyss pump for a return pump through Penductors. I've got two MP60s in the far background that you can't make out, and I've got an MP40 on the right side of the tank, uh, the right side of this coral, that are blowing toward it. So you'd think it would be knocking it to the left, but yet it's drifting toward the right. Pretty impressive, huh? This coral is one of those, one, it's a coral that I got from the 20,000 gallon reef in New York, and it's been growing for years. I fragged it a couple of times. It's called the Tracy Morgan Gorgonian, if you didn't know that. And uh, super easy to care for. All I did was glue it in the tank and ignore it. Cheers to another four years. Here's a view from above from last night because it was just gorgeous and I had to share. This is only being lit by XHOs, and they are the super tenic lighting that hangs next to my metal halide fixtures and points straight down on the reef. And the greens, the oranges, the pinks, they just glow under this light. It, it's phenomenal. If you did not see this video last night, it's because you're not subscribed to my Facebook page. So I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description of this video, so be sure to check out each link, find out what pertains to you, and follow it. In an upcoming video, I will discuss the filtration that keeps this 400 gallon reef happy and healthy. I'll also give you an update on the 60 gallon anemone cube, because I know that's very popular with all of you. If you happen to be in my area, please be sure to stop by tomorrow at Frank's Tanks in Fort Worth, Texas. We are going to be doing a water testing party, and that should be a lot of fun. And finally, if you are still watching this video and you are alive, please click subscribe. That's an inside joke, but it's hilarious to me.